Astronaut Scott Kelly spent 340 days in space, almost a whole year, and it was worthwhile. We did learn a lot, uh, but in particular, what we're talking about today is the effects on his body. Why does this matter? Well, humans may be wanting to go to Mars someday, someday fairly soon, and we need to explore uh, what the, the physical effects of doing that might be of prolonged uh, space habitation. And we've learned quite a bit from Scott Kelly himself. Uh, mainly there are side effects including poor basketball skills and burning skin. Ooh. Let us clarify. <laughs> oh, that sounds painful. I don't yeah. Well, I know, so when, when you say burning skin, I immediately thought, like, oh, he's going to be more sensitive to light. That makes sense. Not that, oh, when I sit in a chair for more than 10 minutes, suddenly everything around me hurts really I, bad. I to understand what yeah. he means by burning. Burn, yeah. Is it like when you get, like, your foot falls asleep mm -hmm. and you feel, like, pins and needles? Yeah. Is it physical warmth? Yeah, is it, is it, or is it just like, you know, again, I would think it would be more of a, a reaction to the world around you mm -hmm. and just the having all this solar energy. But no, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit about just how your muscles have come to atrophy, especially with nearly a year in space. And, mm -hmm. you know, think about it with, um, you know, people who have had to spend long times in the hospital uh, and, and not being able to move. And especially now, now these are people who have spent, almost a year in gravity or anti-gravity. And mm -hmm. so they have no sense of being able to touch. So anything they touch, it's gonna become really sore and really sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it's gonna feel like prickling and burning. Oh gosh, oh, that just sounds, that sounds so miserable. I'm so sorry, Scott. He'll get used to it. He's, he's a big, tough guy. Uh, but yeah. he, let's see what he had to say about it in particular. And you be the judge of what he means. Uh, well, if he did try basketball, and to that he said, I tried to shoot some basketballs yesterday and I didn't get any of them in the net. Uh, not that I'm good at basketball <laughs> in general anyway. <laughs> On my first flight, that was seven days. I had the tendency to want to let something go, but never again. But definitely throwing things, you tend to underestimate the effects of gravity. Yeah. You know, like Chris Hadfield might with a microphone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you're in an anti-gravity mm -hmm environment you can just drop things yeah. and it'll be fine or like, you can Ooh. just you don't have to uh, account for the uh, force you need mm -hmm. to put for something to have momentum it's just going to have some amount of yeah. natural momentum I guess just by the nature of letting go um, and it's it's interesting to see how that happened uh, he also got 1.5 inches taller in space uh, we can attribute that to uh, the that, that's something that has been well, yeah. known about. That yeah. The vertebrae yeah, the vertebrae will separate a little bit. I yeah. mean, when it's not carrying the weight mm -hmm. of a torso, that, that does make sense that it would just kind of yeah, it just, relax it's just now. Yeah, the, the, the lack of gravity allows it to expand, but then once um, astronauts return back to Earth, uh, our natural gravity reverts everything back to normal. So within a couple of days, he had lost that height. So now he can't say that he's taller than his brother. Well, his twin brother yeah, his uh, twin. is actually a uh, retired mm -hmm. astronaut Mark Kelly, who yes. did serve as control in mm -hmm. a lot of uh, experiments that uh, Scott Kelly undertook. He did have blood drawn at various points during his excursion. Uh, we do not have the results back on the blood tests, uh, and it said other bodily yeah. fluids. I don't know what they <laughs> are. We'll find out later. Well, and I think the biggest thing that we're going to find out, too, is the effects, the long-term effects of being in space for a year and, and further because, you know, that amount of exposure to radiation mm -hmm. and um, other elements is going to, you know, is this it is up just the beginning. Yeah, this is only the beginning because this opens the doors to how people are going to last in Mars. Mm -hmm. So we also had uh, uh, other experiments conducted to look at eye health. Mm. Uh, we know we need to have a lot of fluids in yeah. our eyes in a specific way. How is that affected by anti-gravity? Uh, fluid distribution, uh, psychology, other physical and emotional yeah. indicators. Ooh. Um, it takes a very special person to be an astronaut. Yeah. You've got to have the right stuff. And not everyone has it, <laughs> and I'm sure I don't. I'd have space madness. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, when, we, when they get to Mars, he, Scott Kelly did compare getting out of uh, his capsule mm -hmm. on his return as he thought he could probably handle yeah. muscle-wise uh, whatever challenges would be similar to going, uh, letting out on Mars mm -hmm. itself. At that point, I, I guess he was keeping up his muscle strength yeah. and doing I mean, what he could. During that's going to be the key is whatever vessel we build to go to Mars is they're going to have to keep some semblance of gravity in order to keep, you know, a, a, a balance in place and to be able to exercise and keep everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's going to be keeping up that stamina. That's that's the key. Yeah. Well, it's it's a lot of work yeah. and it's a lot of work on the inside and the outside mm -hmm. and being 
uh, pushing the human limits as far as you can, which I think is what space exploration is all yeah. about uh, in a nutshell. Audience, what do you think of Scott Kelly's excursion and the viability of humans on Mars? Uh, so far, it looks all right. Let us know below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.